In the resurrection story of John's gospel, there are lots of emotions going through the lives of the disciples and the women who came to the tomb early that first morning. They are heartbroken. For the one on whom they had hung their hopes and dreams of a better land and a better time and a better world had been crucified and buried. More than once in the gospel this morning, the angels and then the one who Mary didn't recognize both ask Mary, why are you weeping? Well, they're weeping because their hearts are broken. They're sad because a tragedy has befallen them in their lives, and they don't know any other response except to feel that deep mourning. I've been that way, it seems like, since I can't remember when here recently. Am I mistaken, or would it not be possible that there is an overwhelming majority of us in this place this morning who feel heartbroken over what's going on all around our world? Do we not feel like the women on the way to the tomb some days? Heartbroken? Because someone they love has died innocently. I just want to cry sometimes at the senseless deaths of so many innocent people. Next week, it will be 50 years since the death of Dr. Martin Luther King, which was simply another example of the murder of an innocent great man. Listen to what he wrote. Dr. King said, It may well be that we will all have to repent in this generation, not merely for the vitriolic words and the violent actions of the bad people, but for the appalling silence and indifference of the good people who sit around and say, let's just wait on time. Social progress never rolls in on the wheels of inevitability. It comes through the tireless efforts and persistent work of dedicated individuals. And without this hard work, time itself becomes an ally of the primitive forces of social stagna stagnation. And so, Dr. King says, we must help time along. We must realize that the time is always right to do the right thing. It doesn't matter how much grief I feel in my heart. It doesn't matter how much the innocent loss of life has made me feel numb. I must still continue to do the right thing and speak up and speak out. Amen? Amen. Mary, in the midst of her grief, <laughs> heard someone call her name. Mary. Mary. I liked the way Ed paused there this morning when he read the scripture. Did you hear that? I didn't tell him to do that. He just did that. Mary. In the midst of our grief, can you hear Jesus calling your name? You've got to be still sometimes. You've got to listen. But I want to suggest to you that in the midst of your deepest, darkest hour of our lives, Jesus is calling all of our names. He's saying, Tim, and Matt, and Angela, and Mary, and Reva, and... Bill and Bob and Harry and Jane and he's saying I'm here with you I haven't left you in the despair of this world I am here I have risen and from that moment Mary would never be the same my friends when you know in your heart that Jesus Christ has risen victorious over hell, death, and the grave. When you know it in your heart beyond a shadow of a doubt, life will never be the same again. 
There have been far too many people in the 10 years that I've been here as pastor who have passed on and are sitting in the balcony, and I miss them, and I know you do too. But I can bear that. I can bear the passing of Reva's mom and dad and my mom and many others in our family. I can bear it because I know that Jesus is alive. I hear him speak our name and say, hang in there. I'm here. I'm with you. And I will walk with you through the deepest and darkest times of your life. And so on this resurrection day, I want to remind us all to hear Jesus saying that truth is stronger than falsehood, that good is stronger than evil, that love is stronger than hatred, and that life is stronger than death. Amen? Amen. Nothing, my friends, is too hard for God. Nothing. And so I close this morning with my favorite preacher story of my whole 37 years of ministry about my good friend Harry Yates, who I went all the way through school, and Harry was living in Atlanta as a lawyer, and Harry has a special child, and he was a part of a group of other special children. And they went to the Atlanta Aquarium from Birmingham to Atlanta, and all the children were being observed by the parents who went on this trip. It was a small group. But one of those special children in that group got lost. And everybody was frantic. Frantic. Can you imagine? But after two hours of searching, they found this little guy, not more than five years old. Where have you been? I've just been looking at all the animals in the aquarium. They said, look, we are so exasperated, we're ready to go. And so they go to their cars, and they all get in their cars, and they go home. And Harry tells this story. Mom and dad of that little boy said when they got home, the little boy came in the door, went up the stairs with all of his belongings on his back, and said, Mom, I'm going to take my bath. And when she went up to check on him and opened the door, she could not believe her eyes. For there in the bathtub with him was a baby penguin from the Atlanta Aquarium. He had snuck that little critter out of the Atlanta Aquarium in his backpack. If a special person like that could do something so amazing like that, is anything too hard for God? Amen? Amen! My friends, I feel heartbroken at times, but I still believe. Do you believe? Do you know that Christ is alive? That no matter what sadness or heartache or discouragement may come your way, Christ will walk with you. He will call your name. He will bless you and keep you and walk with you through the valley of the shadow of death or through the mountaintop of Hallelujah Chorus. Praise be to God. He is alive forever and ever. Trust in Him with all your heart and welcome Him as your Lord and Savior this day to the glory of God the Father. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, once more, let those who believe say amen.